my dear friends i wish to greet you in the name of the lord my dear brothers and sisters all of us are going through a very traumatic experience all these days i'm sure none of you ever experienced such a thing in your whole life i never experienced the whole world has come to a standstill the entire space is free of aircrafts the railway lines are silent roads are empty of vehicles and all of us are somehow held up in our own apartments what a painful experience isn't it i'm sure you have been going through this pain fear inconvenience discomforts the question is what are we to do now well one of the things we need to do is to obey the rules and regulations that have been prescribed by the government and the administration as believers we need to lift up our eyes to the mountain to god to pray to pray for people who are suffering on account of this virus also people who are suffering on account of the side effects of this virus this plague the poor who are suffering on account of the lockdown also perhaps we could extend our help to these poor people is that all enough you know in the last two weeks i have been praying very very intensely and one message that has been coming to me very strongly is listen 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 god is speaking your lord god is speaking psalm 50 verse 1 god your lord god is speaking god is speaking to us very powerfully through this event we know god speaks to us in different ways but he speaks very very powerfully through events and experiences god spoke to pharaoh through plagues 10 plagues god was ordering pharaoh to leave his people but of course we know pharaoh hardened his heart in the book of amos chapter 4 we read god is telling to israel i sent many plagues one after the other but you would not listen to me you would not come back to me so the first message that i wish to bring to you is let this be a time when we listen to god in our personal prayer and in our community prayers we listen to the lord ask the lord as samuel said lord speak to your servant similarly let all of us raise our hearts and minds to god and ask and say lord what is your message for me what is your message for my community for my family what is your message for my church for my diocese we must listen to the lord we should not harden our hearts the second thing that comes to me is you see our institutions have been closed our institutions have been closed our retreat centers have been closed we have no more programs our projects have been closed for the time being our work has been stopped for the time being god is speaking to us in the book of hosea chapter 6 in verse 6 the lord says what i want from you is not your sacrifices but your steadfast love this particular experience from the lord is for us an invitation from him to live a god centered life not a work centered life not a project centered life not a program centered life not an institution centered life not a ministry centered life but a god centered life in fact i was reflecting that by stripping us of all our activities god is testing our real worth as gold is tested by rubbing god is rubbing us to test our real worth what is the real worth of this son this daughter god is testing us so we are invited to live a god centered life we know god jesus was a friend of uh, of martha and mary and lazarus and he used to visit their family in luke's gospel chapter 10 we read that he visited the family and martha was busy cooking for jesus and mary was sitting at the feet of jesus and listening to him now martha comes to jesus and says relieve my sister to come and help me in the kitchen and there the lord snatches the time the opportunity and speaks to martha very very strongly what was that god the lord spoke to her he said martha martha 
you are troubled and worried about many things. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the better portion, for it shall not be taken away from her. Is that not our experience today? All that we have been busy with has been taken away from us. This is an invitation from the Lord to taste the better portion, to sit at the feet of the Lord and listen to Him. In fact, many of us have wandered away from the path because we stopped listening to Him. The Word of God says in the Gospel of Luke, John chapter 10, verse 27, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. We cannot follow Christ without having heard Him, listened to Him. This is another very, very important message. You know, in the book of, uh, in the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verses 5 to 10, the Lord says, Consider how you have fared. Consider how you have fared. He says, you have sown much, but you, are har you have harvested very little. You eat, but not satisfied. You drink, but not satisfied, not full. You cloth, but you are not warm. You that earn wages, put in a bag that has holes. And the Lord says, you know why? Because my temple lies in ruins. All these things are happening to you because my temple lies in ruins. Of course, at that time it meant the temple of Jerusalem. But what does it mean today for us? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Paul says, you are the temple of God. You are the temple of God. The Lord says, consider how you have fed. You desired much, but the results are very little. Why? Because the temple lies in ruins. And this is a God-given time, my brothers and sisters, to rebuild the temple. There the Lord says in Haggai, go up the hill and bring timber and rebuild the temple. To rebuild the temple. This is an opportunity for all of us believers to rebuild the temple. When we have rebuilt the temple, everything will be too beautiful. My brothers and sisters, we have many messages from the Lord. And the Lord will speak to you very, very personally. He has many, many messages. These days our churches have been closed. For good reason, we know. Our liturgical services have been banned. Prayer meetings have been banned. For good reasons, we know that. What is the message from the Lord? I find the message from the Lord in John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 23, where Jesus tells the Samaritan woman when she asked, they say, we should worship God in Jerusalem. Where are we to worship God? And Jesus said, my dear woman, the time is coming. And now here it has already come. When true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth, and such are the ones God seeks. We have been busy with a lot of religiosity, a lot of rituals, regulations, rules, routines. And the Lord is asking us to move from religiosity to spirituality. To move from religiosity to spirituality. To move from the exterior and external to interior. You will have many more reflections. Let's pray that the Lord speaks to us in the silence of the night, in the silence of our heart. God will speak to us. In any case, we know for sure, nothing happens to us without the knowledge of God. If the Lord has allowed such a devastating and shattering experience, God has a message. And it is the responsibility of every one of us, no matter where we are, what is our position, to ask God in the silence of the night, in the silence of our heart, O oh God, speak, your servant is listening. O oh God, speak, your servant is listening. Oh God, speak, your servant is listening.